My great friend TJ and we are about to worship this morning. What is, what is going on right now? Um, so, full disclosure, he called me this morning and said, hey, you got to get to church. Um, we need you. And I was thinking, ah, oh, you know what? Maybe Timmy's a little sad. His Cowboys lost. Doesn't want to get out of bed. I get it. I'll cover for him. And last week, I just signed up. If you were here last week, we had sign-ups to serve. So if you haven't, get a, shot, get a chance to uh, maybe go on the app or tell someone in the Blue Room. I signed up to serve in the kids' area. I'm very excited. But I also signed up to be in the band. So thank you. I, I threw that away. I thought it was a joke. Come on, TJ. Yeah. Who, we, um, need, we need another singer. No, I, uh, I don't, we're good. I've heard you sing. Um, obviously, by the look of that guitar, you're a really good guitar player. Um, the, I like the, the oh, tape at the top is very nice. It's, I still can get um, F12s and B minors. Yeah, I like the shirt, um, though. This is a nice shirt you're wearing. I really like that yeah. one. Hey, if you want to join the TJ Golf Band Club, we got, we're up to 12 <laughs> members in two years. So yeah, I don't, still yeah. free to join. <laughs> um, Brandon, can we switch? Yeah, um, I think you're mistaken. We appreciate you signing up. And if you guys want to sign up, it's still time. You can uh, click the QR code and sign up and all that kind of stuff. Um, but why don't, you know, maybe just do the welcome and then you can go uh, to the kids area because that's where you're really talented. That's your talent is leading those kids. Not so much this. I didn't hear anything you said, but <laughs> um, what I will tell you is if you're watching online, we're so glad that you're joining us. They're going to drop a link. Please click that. Let us know where you're watching from, if we can pray for you. If you want to talk to someone personally, then we have a blue room out here um, on the left of the lobby, uh, and you guys have chose a wonderful week to join us, the start of Family Tree. Yeah, you skipped a bunch of stuff there, but um, that's okay. Um, he was so excited about singing that he forgot how to do the welcome. We are so glad that you're here. Um, if it's your first time, we'd love to get to know you. And we do that by having you scan the QR code right there on the screen or in front of you. Um, and, or you can fill out the connection card right there as well. Or do the stuff that Keith said out of order there earlier about clicking if you're watching online or going to the Blue Room. We'd love to get to know you. I'm just um, ready for them to stand up and worship yeah, with well, us. But we got some more stuff because don't forget, there's more to the QR code than just for newcomers, it's yeah. not just to fill out the connection card. Right, there's a lot of things that you can do on that, you know, from a serving standpoint, serving, yeah. sign up for a group. Group, um, giving, I'm, I'm, I'm still just baffled that you made me get yeah. here early for rehearsal and yeah. I can't even sing. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I can't make it where you can sing. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, if you wanna walk out uh, today, you can sign up for groups. We have group sign up today, so make sure you stop by, talk to some people out there for that as well. Um, but now it's time. Do it, Keith. It's Do time. What? It's time for us to it's sing. It's time for you to leave and us to sing. Thank you. Why don't you stand Have a great and morning, with somebody? Let's get together and sing.
we thank you that we can rest in just who you are. We thank you that we can run to you when we stumble, when we fall. God, you are good. You are so good. God, remind us. That's our prayer this morning. Remind us. Remind us who you created us to be for our family, for our friends, for you. God, we want to rest in you. We want to lean into you. And God, prepare the hearts right now. Prepare our hearts to hear whatever message you want us to hear, but let us lean in. Let us dwell in this place. Let us dwell in your spirit. You alone are good. And we praise you for that and that alone. And it's in your name we pray, amen. Go ahead and grab a seat. Good morning. Really, really excited about today. Glad you're here. If you're a guest today, uh, my name's uh, Trey Kelly. I'm lead pastor here. And we are launching, well, thank you. Uh, we're, we're launching a series today. Uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly excited about it. A series called Family Tree. And I'm excited for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I'm excited because this is a universal series. It's universal. Every single one of us comes from somewhere and someone. I'm also excited because even though we all have that same beginning, there are so many different pictures and ways people think about and process when I say family tree. Like for some of you, you immediately think back to gatherings, to, to celebrations, and you have these big, warm, fuzzy, nice, awesome feelings when you think about your family tree. Others of you in the room, let's just say, you have a different reaction when I talk about a family tree. Uh, maybe your memories aren't quite as warm. They aren't quite as fuzzy. Some people, when you talk about a family tree, that they look back and they don't, they don't know much. A uh, family tree was pretty small. Maybe somewhere along the way, you changed family trees. Uh, others people, when, when they look back, man, like they, you can't even count all the nieces and nephews and cousins and and aunts and uncles and second cousins and third cousins, which I don't understand, by the way. I don't, I don't understand the third and the seconds. They're just cousins. Um, for me, when I think about a uh, family tree, I have, I have two kind of immediate thoughts. Uh, one goes back and, and one goes forward. Um, when, when I think back on my family tree, I kind of get overwhelmed because I feel like I was incredibly blessed uh, growing up. Um, I grew up Knowing both sets of my grandparents, um, they both survived until, all four of them survived until I was an adult. Um, I knew some of their brothers and sisters, like that's how deep the family tree goes. Um, I have aunts and uncles, cousins on both sides. I'm still very close with aunts and uncles and cousins on both sides. So for me, when I look back, the family tree, it is, it is, pre, it is pretty warm. It is pretty fuzzy. It is, it is a very happy, happy thought. I also process family tree, but moving forward. I think about the family that God in his goodness has blessed Danielle and I to begin. Um, she, we got married uh, over 20 years ago. Wow. You don't look like it. I do. They were like, he's been married 20 years. Um, but God's, God's blessed us with three, three sons, three strapping sons who eat <laughs> lots of food. And it's really funny, as I was reflecting on this, um, I never knew, but I was so relieved when I had a son. Um, my, I am an only son. My dad was an only son. And my grandfather was an only son. And my grandfather's dad, I guess that would have been my great-grandfather, was not in the picture. Uh, he left uh, my great-grandmother when she was pregnant with uh, my great-grandfather, I mean, with, with, my, with my grandfather. And so in my mind, our kind of family tree, the Kelly family tree, really kind of begins with, with my grandfather. And he was the only son. My dad was the only son. I was the only son. And I didn't realize that I was carrying this pressure of continuing and, 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 and birthing the Kelly name into further existence. But uh, when Danielle and I were, we, well, uh, we, we were not pregnant. She was pregnant. <laughs> when she was pregnant with David, 
Um, we went to the doctor's appointment where they do the sonogram. They're going to tell you the sex of the baby. And up until that moment, I would have sworn to you, I told her, anybody who would listen, I don't care if it's a boy or a girl. I just want it to be healthy. I tr- and I truly in my soul didn't think I cared if it was a boy or a girl. And so we're sitting there. Danny's laying on the table. I'm sitting now. The doctor's doing her thing. And she goes, all right, do you want to know the sex of the baby? We're like, yeah. And she shows, she says, it's a boy. And guys, without thinking, I automatically jumped up, raised my hands like we had scored a touchdown. And I was like, yes! Like, I mean, I had this guttural response to, yes, the Kelly name lives on. And I had absolutely no idea. I was carrying that until that exact moment. But it makes sense uh, because on that side of the family, uh, my grandfather, he, he's who I'm named after, actually. Some of you don't, don't know this. I'm, I'm, I'm Trey, but Trey is a nickname. Uh, my actual name is Bobby Doc Kelly III, not Robert Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my grandfather was Bobby Kelly Sr. Obviously, my dad was Bobby Junior, I was the third. And, and my grandfather, man, in our family, on that side in the Kelly family, I mean, he was kind of the hero. He was a legend. Uh, because, you know, he, 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 his, his father abandoned him before he was born, so he grew up without a dad. Um, he was born premature and, and really should not have survived because if you can do the math, they didn't have a whole lot for premature babies back then. Uh, what I understand it, my great grandmother like had to, had to feed him from a, from a little like a a, 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 a dropper, uh, but he but he survived. He made it, um, and uh, he and my grandmother had had a big family. He was an incredibly loving man. He was warm. He was he was gentle. He I mean oh, I, I get emotional. Uh, sorry, I am prone to outbursts of emotion. Um, he was awesome, and we used to spend a lot of time with him. And with, with, with that side, of, well, both sides of the family, but we spent a lot of time with him. And more times than I can count, okay, he would kind of pull me aside, big smile on his face, and he would say, Hey, I'm the first. Your daddy's the second. And you're the third. He was so proud of me and the fact that I carried his name. I think it got planted in me somewhere that I have got to pass this on. And so sitting in that doctor's office, when I found out David was going to be a boy, there were deep wells of relief in me that I, I didn't even know were there. But it was such relief. The name is going to live on. Bobby the first, Bobby the second, Bobby the third. And so we named our son David. <laughs> because you do not name a kid one thing and call the kid something else. That's torture. Every first day of school, they'd be calling her old Bobby Kelly. Here, I go by Trey. Why? My parents thought it would be funny, I guess. I don't know. So they carried the name with their last names. My kids all go by their first names because that's the way it's supposed to be. I'm carrying a little trauma from my name. Now, I tell you that story because you have similar stories. We all have similar stories where they're We have good pictures of our family tree, bad pictures of our family tree, lots of information, limited information. All of us are carrying messages, narratives, assumptions about life that we got from our families. And for the vast majority of us, we learned them so early They were implanted so deeply in us that they don't feel like things we learned. They feel completely and totally self-evident. For example, I grew up in a home where my mother was in charge 
of the finances and the bills. She kept the checkbook. She paid the bills. When computers became a thing, yes, kids, there were times where we didn't have computers in our house. And, but when we got a computer, uh, we pretty quickly got a program called Quicken, which was a way to manage finances. My mom used it. My mom taught me how to use it. And so I grew up in a world where mom pays the bills. The wife pays the bills. It's what I thought was completely and totally normal. It never occurred to me there was another way to do it. And then I got married. And because that was the way I thought it worked, I was just like, all right, you'll pay the bills because that's what mom did and you're, you're the mom now, so pay the bills. And that's when I learned not everybody handles bills the same way. I learned that not everybody has a certain place in the kitchen where the bills go the second they come in from the mail. And I learned that not everybody pays their bills weeks in advance. And I learned that some people actually pay their bills late. And that was when I learned that we had to change some things about handling finances in our family. And I decided to pay the bills from then on. Again, we all have things like this, things that we learned, things that we experienced that shape our current reality, and we never stop to think about it. But here's what, here's what really happens. Here's what really happens. Most of us go through life believing that this is how the world works. And the reason we believe this is how the world works is because this is how my family works. This is how the world works because this is how my family works. And this is where I want to pause because this is why we're doing this series. We're doing a series so we can set aside some time and create some space to just simply gain an awareness for the messages for the assumptions, for the beliefs that we're carrying into our current reality, that we carry into high school, that we carry into college, we carry into dating, we carry into marriage, we carry into parenting, we carry into our careers. We carry all these things with us completely unaware that someone else's reality might be different than ours, unaware that this is actually something we were taught, or maybe not taught, probably caught is more accurate. Because we don't really talk about these things as a family. This is just the way our family works. This is just the way it is. And if you're a parent, you've all experienced this caught reality. Because one day you're parenting a child, and you're parenting hard, and you think you're parenting well, and they do something you know, not quite exactly what you wanted them to do, and maybe you get a little irritated, or if you're like me, you get a lot irritated. And without thinking, you say a thing, or you do a thing, or your face does a thing, and that little voice in the back of your head says, Oh, no! You sound just like your dad! You sound just like your mom! They didn't teach you that. You caught it. This series is simply about learning the things we were taught and the things we were caught. And eventually what we're going to do is we're going to hold them up to Jesus and say, Jesus, what do you think about these things in our lives? For example, what were you taught about success and failure? What did you catch about success and failure? How do you define success in your life? How do you handle failure in your life? Where would you learn it? I bet it's somebody in your family. Same with emotions. How does your family handle emotions? My family was an emotional family. That's why I cry on stage. We were allowed to get emotional. Some families don't get emotional. And so for you to not have emotion is as completely self-evident and common as for me to have emotions. Same thing with money, same thing with gender roles, same thing with conflict. We all have these messages. We all have these narratives. We all have these assumptions that we are bringing into our current reality. And I know some of you, you, you have a really valid question. I know you're thinking it. 
So what? Okay, yeah. Yeah, my, my, I learned some stuff from my family. I, I, I clearly pick up some traits. I, I sound like my dad when I get angry. Yeah, sure, but so what? Why are we talking about this in church? Why are we spending a Sunday? And why in the world are we spending four Sundays on it? Why is it that important? And I think that's a very, very great question. And it's one we really have to all agree with before we can move on in this series. And in fact, my whole goal today is simply to answer that question. Um, if you've been around our church a while, you know sometimes our series kind of build on each other. We'll kind of leave and we'll, we'll pick up the next week. Well, this is definitely one of those build on series. And so I want you to know that because today is just an intro, try to give us some, 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 some thoughts around the topic we're talking about. There's a very good chance you're going to leave today with more questions than answers. And I just want you to know that because that's okay. Because if you leave with questions, my hope is that you'll spend some time this week reflecting on those questions and asking those questions. And if you ask Jesus, I bet I'll answer. Because that's really the point of this entire series. So, so, so why are we doing this? Why does this matter? Well, it's because I know in a room like this, there's different groups of people in the room. As I said, we all have different reactions when we think about our family tree. But I kind of want to talk about the extremes, and then we'll meet in the middle. On one extreme, I know there are people in this room who talking about your family tree is terrifying. Because when you look back, you can clearly see it was not a healthy tree. If you look up dysfunctional in the dictionary, there might be a picture of your family. And you've made peace with that. You understand that. But if we're honest, just look at me. Don't look around. If we're honest, one of your deepest fears is that you're not going to be able to break that cycle. That you're going to pass that dysfunction on to the next generation. I know because I've had conversations with you. And if that's you today, I just want you to know you picked a perfect Sunday to be here. This series is for you. Because there is hope for your future family tree. On the other extreme... There's people who look back at their family tree, and there's also fear, but not because they don't want to repeat it, but because they're afraid they'll never measure up. Oh, my family was perfect. They nailed it. I'll never be able to do as good as them. I'll never, I'll look around. I'm not doing as good as they have. And so when you look back, you you feel hopeless because you don't feel like you'll ever be able to measure up to what you experienced. And if that's you today, Boy, you picked a perfect Sunday to attend our church because this series is for you because there is hope for you. And my assumption is most of us are somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I can look back on my family. You know, it wasn't perfect, but it was fine. Lots of people had it worse than I did. What's the point of this? Why would we spend time looking back? If that's you, you picked a perfect Sunday to be here. Because I have an answer for you as well. And it's the same answer that gives hope to the hurting. And it's the same answer that gives hope to the people afraid that they'll never measure up. And the answer is for us to first understand what our Heavenly Father has done for us. And it's only from that foundation that we can begin to look back and to uncover the narratives and uncover the assumptions and hold them up to Jesus and say, what do you think about the way I handle success? What do you think about the way we handle failure in our family? What do you think about the way we handle emotions? What do you think about the way we handle money? What do you think about the way that we handle conflict? What do you think, Jesus? And somebody's like, why would we ask? Jesus? It's a great question. And I want to answer it for you by taking you to a letter in our New Testament. It's a letter written by this guy named Paul. We talk about Paul a ton in our church. Uh, He was a Christian missionary, and he would go to new regions and start churches, and those churches didn't know how to follow Jesus, and so he would write them letters, giving them instructions for how to become Christians. And 
What we believe as Christians is that God was speaking through those letters and they've been preserved for us. And almost 2,000 years later, we can read them and it's like God is speaking directly to us. And in his letter to the church at Ephesus, at the very beginning, Paul answers the question, why are we looking back? Paul answers the question, why should I have hope? Paul answers the question when he simply reveals who God is and what he's done. For us. So if you have your Bibles, you can open to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. If not, it's going to be up here on the screen. Now, I'm only going to read two verses today. The first verse is a truth about God that I hope rocks us to our core. And the second verse is what he did because of that truth. So first, let me read you what Paul says. He's talking to those of us who love Jesus, and he says, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Now, I want to stop for a minute. I just, want to, I just want you to stop. Stop what you're doing. And if you are a Christ follower today, I want you to read that again. And I want you to kind of ask your soul, do I know this? Do I experience this? Do I feel this daily? Do I actually walk in the assurance that the God of the universe knew me before he created the world, that he knew me, that he picked me, that he loved me, that he chose me. He's not settling for me. It's not like we were dividing teams and he had last pick and he got stuck with me. This is how God feels about every person in this room. And if you consider yourself a Christian, you've experienced this. If you're here today kind of checking out faith, we're honored that you're here. In fact, we've designed our church for you. We hope that you feel safe, kind of kicking the tires of faith. And I want you to know this is true of you as well. Before God created the earth, he knew you and he loved you. And he chose you. That's why he sent his son. All we have to do is accept his invitation and choose to follow. And when we do, this is what happens. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. He did this by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. He sends Jesus, lives a perfect life, Jesus sacrifices himself on the cross as the penalty for our sins. He comes back to life as proof we can live a new life as well. And what this is saying is, is when you choose Jesus, when you place your faith in Jesus, you get adopted into a new family. You get adopted into God's family. What that means is every single one of us in this room that consider ourselves Christians, our eternal last name has changed because our family tree has changed. We're now part of a perfect family tree with our perfect Heavenly Father. And that's why if you're worried about breaking the cycle of the past, you don't have to because Jesus in you will do it. It's why if you're worried about never living up to the previous expectations, you don't have to worry about that because Jesus in you will do it. And it's why, for the majority of us, we're like, why are we doing this series? Why are we having this conversation? It's because we've been adopted into a new family with new assumptions and new beliefs and new things that are self-evident. And one of the things we're called to do as Christians is to follow Jesus daily. And one of the things he wants to do is make us more like him each day. And so really what we're going to do in this series is simply look back in order to try to unpack some of the narratives, some of the assumptions, some of the beliefs, so we can be aware of them. And then we can look at Jesus and say, what do you think? This is how my family thought about success. But Jesus, how do you define success? But before we get there, there's a question that I just want to challenge all of us to begin to wrestle with this week. Really, that's it. That's all we're doing today. There's a question that I invite you to be open to the Holy Spirit's answer in your heart. 
And the question is very simple. I want to challenge all of us to spend this week asking, what is my family tree growing in me? That's it. What about my past? What about the assumptions and narratives that I grew up with? What is still impacting and affecting my present life? That's it. That's all we're doing is just asking God to open our eyes to what's impacting us. Both good, what are the traditions that I learned from my family? What are the character traits I learned from my family that I'm desperately trying to pass on to my children? The bad, what are some of the cycles I'm trying to break? And in case you don't remember, let me put them back on the screen. This comes back to success and failure. It comes back to emotions. Jesus... This is how we handle emotions in my family. But how do you think we should handle emotions? Jesus, this is how we handle money in my family. How do you think we should handle money? Jesus, this is how we assign gender roles in our family. How do you think we should? Jesus, this is how we handle conflict in my family. We were kind of a throwdown family. We were kind of a shouted out family. I don't know if you know, if you're from a shouted out family, and then you marry somebody who was a don't talk about a family. Chaos. No, the challenge this week is just to simply invite you to be willing to ask this question. To be willing to ask Jesus, show me where I struggle with this. Show me where these things are coming forward in my life. Show me what's happening. And I know, I know, I know some of you in the room, and I get it, have, a, have an innate problem with this entire approach because what you've heard me doing for almost 30 minutes in your eyes is I'm trying to get you to blame your parents for stuff. <laughs> That's what you're wondering. Is this going to be a series about blaming mom and dad? I don't really feel like blaming mom and dad. Let me be very clear. Absolutely not. This is not an invitation to blame anyone. That's not the point of the series. That's not Jesus' heart. We're told over and over and over, honor your parents. This is not about blaming. Look, full disclosure, the vast majority of us were raised by moms and dads doing absolutely the best they could every single day. There is no reason to look back and blame anything. But I think we can all agree there is a vast difference between our best and God's best. There's a difference. God's best is perfect. Our best will always fall short because we, all of us, are sinners. Which means we've all sinned. And it means we've all been sinned against. Which means your parents, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles who were doing their absolute best still fell short. They still sinned from time to time. And I know sometimes we don't get this. God doesn't label things sin because he's trying to ruin our life, because he's trying to steal our fun. He labels things sin because they are painful and they are damaging to our souls. And the reality of our world is that we were raised by imperfect people, which means there were times we were sinned against and that sin was damaging. That sin left a mark. It left a wound on our souls. And it's not their fault. It's just what sin does. And for most of us, we never go back and deal with those wounds. They're just there. And they shape almost every aspect of our lives. 
They shape how we view success and failure. They shape how we view conflict. They shape how we view emotions. But not in a Jesus-honoring way. We are simply reacting to the wounds of the past. And what I know Jesus wants to do, because we're going to talk about this next week, he promises life to the fullest, is he wants to take us on a journey of healing those wounds. Because if we don't heal them, we have a much higher probability of passing them on to the next generation. Because it's in our family tree. And so at the core, that, that's what the series is about. It's not about blaming. It's about honoring. Thank you for how hard you worked. Thank you for the lessons you taught me. And I'm going to spend some time with Jesus getting healthy in some of the few areas where we all fall short. Because parents, I'll tell you right now, if you're leading your children to believe you're perfect, <laughs> we'll cover that in a few weeks. But don't do it. <laughs> don't do it because you're not. None of us are. And some of you know this because you spent a lot of time, energy, and money trying to heal those wounds. I believe now is the time. I believe God's led our church to this moment so that we can all walk together into this question. What is my family tree growing in me? Just ask it this week. Next week, we're going to learn how to even go deeper into it. So again, you don't have to do a whole lot. Just, just be open to this. And I, I want to encourage you that we're done. Uh, it's really silly. When I was writing this message uh, was a couple weeks ago, this, 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 <laughs> this saying kept coming to my head over and over and over again. And finally, I was like, all right, Jesus, I'll say it. Um, because it didn't make any sense to me because it's from a television show. And full disclosure, when I talk about this television show, I'm not recommending it. I'm not approving it. I'm not saying your children should watch it. Just full disclaimer. But about a decade ago, Daniel and I started watching a television show uh, called Friday Night Lights. It was about high school football in Texas. And the lead uh, character is a guy named Coach Taylor. He was a high school football coach. And if you've seen the show, he kind of had a, a chant he would do right before uh, they'd run out to play. And he would say, clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. He would go, clear eyes, full hearts, and the kids would all go, can't lose. And it was like, rah, and they'd run out. Well, that kept coming to my head over and over and over as I was writing this sermon, over and over and over. And then it finally occurred to me, that's what we need for this series. So that's what I'm praying for you and for me and for us. Number one, I'm praying, praying for clear eyes, Holy Spirit-driven eyes that as we look back, we can clearly see the good, the bad, the positive, the negative, the traits we want to carry forward, and maybe some areas where there might be some wounds we're still carrying. I pray we see that clearly because those wounds need to be taken to Jesus. And when they are, he can heal them. So I pray for clear eyes. But I equally know we can't do this journey without full hearts not full of each other, not full of confidence, full of Jesus. He is the only one that can lead us backwards. He is the only one that can show us what to leave and what to take, and he's the only one who can lead us forward. Because remember, we've been adopted into his family. He's the leader now. And so we do this, hopefully full of the Holy Spirit, full of Jesus, confident that we're walking back with him, not to blame, but to understand so that we can become the men and women he created us to be in accord to his family tree with his assumptions and his narratives and his way of handling success and failure and conflict and emotions. So we need clear eyes and we need full hearts. We need them together. And if we pray for that and we get that, if we have clear eyes, we have full hearts, then the guarantee is we can't lose because this is an invitation from our Heavenly Father to discover who He's created us to be 
to discover some things we need to leave behind, to discover some things we need to carry forward, to discover some areas we need some healing, and to discover some areas we need to double down on and make sure we're passing them to the next generation. Clear eyes, full hearts. Guys, we can't lose because Jesus is our shepherd and he's going to guide us on this journey. So that's our invitation is to, as a church, let's all spend the next month just wrestling with the idea of what is my family tree growing in me. Let's allow Jesus to give us clear eyes to see it. Let's allow Jesus to give us full hearts so we confidently move forward. And let's walk knowing whatever we find, we can't lose. Because Jesus is the one leading us there. And he's the one who's going to lead us through it. So simply begin to ask this question this week. And then come back next week. As we continue to understand where we come from so we can discover where Jesus wants us to go. Let me pray. Father, we love you so much. And oh, we are just so, we're so grateful. Oh, we're so grateful for your son. We're so grateful for his love. We're so grateful for our families. Oh, we're so grateful for what you've done. We're so grateful for, for, for the good. And we're, God, we're grateful for the bad because we know you're at work in it. Oh, we ask you to just wrap your arms around us. Lovingly lead us back so that we can get a clear picture of how you want to take us forward. We surrender to you. We trust you. Reveal to us what our family tree is growing in us so we can hold it up to you and produce your family tree moving forward. We love you. We thank you. So your sons, let me pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. What a great start to this series. Thank you, Trip, for helping us uh, think about uh, these things and have this important conversation. And I hope you will this week think about what your family tree is growing in you. I know we, our, my family is going to do that. I hope you will as well. Well, each week we take a moment and we stop and we celebrate God for who he is and for what he is he has done in our life and what he's growing in our lives through a special time of giving. Hey, Wellspring, it's time to give our offering. Every week, uh, there are so many things that we can celebrate in this moment. But today, I just want to celebrate you. I want to thank you for how you give so faithfully every single week. And as you give, it helps us to, to provide a place where we can serve the whole family. We can create environments for kids and for students and for, and for adults as well. Thank you for how you give every week so faithfully so we can help more people come to know Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you uh, for just helping us think through our past. Lord, I pray that if there are things that need to be healed, you will heal them. And I pray that if there are things that we should embrace, let's embrace them. As we grow together, as we become more of who you've called us to be. Thank you for this opportunity to give in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as the buckets are being passed, uh, I want to remind you, bring your attention to, uh, last week we finished a series all about discovering next steps. This week, as you uh, walked in, you may have noticed some tables set up in our lobby. Those tables are to help you discover your people. Uh, we'd love for you to take, take a step today. Join a group. Uh, we have group leaders out at, at our tab tables today. You can uh, join a short-term group, a semester-based groups. We have groups that you can join that meet in homes. We'd love to help you take a step today. On your way out, you're going to receive... Uh, a, a document, a piece of paper, a, a thing, that, a brochure that gives you uh, a good rundown of all of our groups. Take that and check those out. Uh, also on the screen behind me, there's a QR code. You can scan that and see what groups are available. We hope you'll take a step today to find your people. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We hope that you will join us next week as we continue this series. Well, we've got one more song to sing, so stand to your feet and let's sing together.
Cause the God I serve knows only how to try us. I'm not afraid to 